So today I learned about how to do forms in Flutter and I'm going to share with you what I learned. So what I built is this app over here that has two input fields and it will not let me submit the login form until both fields are valid. You can see I have an error on it and what I do is it has to have at least an at sign in the email and for the password it needs to have at least four characters uh, and then it'll let me log in. So we're going to go through how I learned this and kind of some things that I learned along the way slash things that didn't make sense at first. So to start off, uh, when I was learning forms, I started off with the cookbook form section in the Flutter docs. Um, but it turns out the tutorial is pretty meh. I mean, I built a form and everything, um, but the way you do it, I'm not sure if it works well for more advanced forms. Uh, slash a lot of people were recommending the block state management to me so I was going to go ahead and try building a form in block uh, or at least with the block technique and so that's what I'm going to be doing in this video or talking about in this video. So I found this example here that goes through validation and block and so this is the example that I'm going to be showing you um, and the code is from this so I'll link this github repo if you want to look at this and grab the code for this as well. All right, so let's jump into the code. Um, this is my main Dart file. Uh, and you'll notice there's nothing special going on in this little My App guy, um, except for one thing. I added a provider. So this is pretty much the exact same, at least from what I can tell, how uh, React works, where you can add a provider and then you can access that provider uh, down the component tree or down the widget tree, I guess, in Flutter. Uh, you'll notice I have this thing called a login screen, and that is a stateless widget, which we're going to take a look at next. So that's pretty much the only thing I'm rendering here is a stateless login screen widget. And it's being wrapped with a provider, and that's how I'm accessing the state, I guess you'd say in this case, or the block, which we're going to get into. Um, so here you can see that I'm saying provider.of, accessing the context, basically that little bit is just getting me the block context, or this is basically the state. Uh, so like in React, when I want to do like subscribe to the context and get context updates and whatnot, I, I look at this kind of like a similar way. Uh, and by the way, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm basically looking through this through the lens of React slash React Native. I don't know if that's the best way to look at it, but that's what I've been doing um, and kind of like fitting my brain around it that way. Uh, and basically, I create an email field, a password field, a container. Um, this email value is something that I added that's not part of the form that I was just, or the uh, GitHub repo that I just added to play around with. And we'll talk about what that is in a little bit. And then the submit button. It's just this thing right here is the email value. It's whatever that the user types in. We'll show how, how I ended up doing that. Uh, but I want to start with what this block is, and then I'll talk about how I'm rendering these fields. So uh, if we go to this file I called block.dart, uh, one thing I wanted to note, this is how you import stuff in Dart, so I learned that today. So just dot slash block. Uh, I'm not sure if it lets me, I actually haven't tried this, see if it lets me not have the extension. Looks like it's mad at me. Yeah. So it looks like you have to use the file extension in the import. Uh, one thing that I have not got used to yet, but I do kind of like is I don't have to like import like import from and then I put like block there you just kind of like have access to everything that is inside of block uh, right so I'm not even exporting this block class and I just have access to it here so that's kind of nifty I kind of like that uh, but it's not quite used to that yet anyway so let's talk about what this block thingy is so first off block is a class um, and the first thing that I noticed is this with syntax that I've never really seen before. Uh, extends makes sense to me. I've seen that. I'm from a Java background, TypeScript background, where you use extends. Um, with, I haven't seen before. It turns out I looked it up. That is a for mixins. And basically, you're just adding functions. So if we look at what the validators are, a validators is just a class. And so it has a validate email and a validate password, or I guess fields in this case. Uh, those two fields. Um, so basically we're getting access to those two fields or adding them to the block class by doing it that way. Um, we'll get into what these validators are in a little bit, but those are just two fields we have access to. 
But notice also in this class, I'm importing from a Rx Dart package. So I had to actually install my first dependency. If you go into, I believe it was my app dot, nope, where was it, pubspec? Yeah, that was it. And I think it's there right there. So I added a dependency Rx Dart 0 0.21.0. And the cool thing about this is I just added this dependency, saved, and it automatically installed it for me. So that was kind of a nice surprise. I didn't have to like do npm start or anything, or npm install. Uh, so these guys, I believe, are streams, or at least are creating some kind of a controller thing. Um, and we can access the stream of it by saying dot .stream. So this uses uh, Rx or reactive programming if you've never heard of that, I recommend just Googling that and getting like a little base foundation. Personally, uh, this is pretty new to me. I have like a base understanding of how it works, but I've never really used it much in practice. Uh, a really long time ago, I did Redux Observable for a little bit, and so it's similar to that, uh, but haven't used it in a while. Uh, anyway, so here are basically two streams that we're creating, uh, an email stream and a password stream. Um, and then this stream here, all it does is it connects to the email controller uh, and it passes through or transforms it through the validate email. So my understanding of this is basically what's happening is, and by the way, this validate email, we're accessing that through the validators. That's coming from the validator class. Uh, so this validate email, this is the type signature. I'm not really sure exactly what's going on here, stream transformers. Uh, from handlers uh, or why this is string string. I assume uh, the stream is using a string as an input, like the email's a string, and then I'm outputting a string, so I'm guessing that's what the transform generic is here. Um, not sure what from handlers is used for. I'm basically just taking what they wrote here. But the inside of the function makes sense. So we have two things here. We have an email and a sync. So email is just the value at this current point in time. So we're checking if it contains an at symbol. If it does, you'll notice we're gonna be adding the email to the stream. Otherwise, we're gonna be adding an error to the stream. Enter a valid email. And basically, this text is what you saw when uh, I have something bad happen, right? Uh, so that's that stream. Uh, the password one here is just passing through the same thing and it is doing the validate password. Um, I guess in that check is doing the same thing, but the check is greater than four password at the length of it. All right, so this is one thing that uh, didn't make sense to me at first. Uh, so we have the email stream, the password stream, and we also have a stream here that tells us whether the uh, submit is valid or whether the current form is valid. So for example, the form is not valid right now, so I cannot log in. And so it uses this function called combine latest two, which takes two streams, email and password. And so what I didn't understand is it just returns true here. So you notice we're not using the E or the P inside of here, we're just returning true. And so that was something that didn't make sense to me. I thought we'd have to like check to make sure there's no error in the E, check no, that there's no error in the password. Um, so I just googled like a visualization of this so I could understand it better and I found this rx marbles Which was pretty helpful um, So this is basically what combined latest looks like um, So you'll notice we have this first stream and the second stream and they just combined it like this In our case, we're just com we're just saying true here. So it's gonna be true 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 across the whole thing but you'll notice uh, what's going to happen here is uh, it doesn't fire until it gets a value from both of them so that was the thing that i didn't understand until i saw this is let's say the email has a value but the password doesn't have a value yet it waits till both have a value and so what i was not understanding is i thought the e and the p would like have an error in them but the error doesn't get added. If we look at the validators, it says add error, not add. So basically what's gonna happen is if we go back to uh, this combined latest two, this never gets called until both the email and the password are given a valid value uh, until sync.add is called. And when that is, oops, when that's called, uh, we're basically just saying it's true. So we don't need to check ENP are actually good values. 
And then there's uh, basically these are the on change functions, change email and change password. And then you have sync.add and sync.add. So this sync.add is how we add something to the stream, uh, I believe. So like how we have one here and a here, the way we add that is calling sync.add one, sync.add a. In our case, we're saying like sync.add jk or whatever the string is here. Uh, and then dispose at the bottom just clears the controller or clears the listener slash observable thing after it's all done. So that's the gist of this block stuff. If we do like a quick wrap up, basically we have these values here that are constantly going to have whether an error is uh, present. Uh, this value just checks whether the submit value is valid or whether the form is valid. And this thing uh, I added called email value, all it does is it has access to this email controller stream. Uh, also you'll notice this has an underscore, that means this is not public. So I could make it public now or I'll make it unpublic with just the underscore at the beginning, so that's kind of interesting. Also one thing I noticed while I was doing this is the hot module reloading is actually so nice. Usually like after a certain amount of time, like it degrades, at least when I was doing like React Native or like Next.js with Flutter, I just like I'm using it and just never stops working. The hot module reloading has been like f like fantastic the entire time, doesn't get into weird states so far. So I've been very impressed by that. Um, so that's our block.dart thing. So that thing here, uh, right, that we created an instance of or we have an access to an instance of because of this provider. That was something I don't think I mentioned is I actually created this provider class or the, the code I got creates this provider class. Uh, I don't exactly understand this part right now. Uh, all I get from it is this provider basically allows us to get access to an instance of the block. Uh, so basically it's a mystery black box to me right now, uh, but I'll probably learn it at some time. All right, so this email value and these email fields basically take a block and they're gonna respond every time the stream gets new data. So we use this stream builder and then we pass in the stream that we want. So block.email is the stream and then this builder is, takes a function. So this snapshot is the thing we care about. I'm not sure why they call it a snapshot. Maybe it's, I guess, because they wanna take a picture in time. Um, but basically this is the value that is in the stream or the snapshot is equal to like one and two and B you can access those values through the snapshot. So here it's checking whether the snapshot has an error. So you'll notice I'm adding values. Dot add is being sync. Dot add gets called. Notice how we're passing in to on change the block. Dot change email. Uh, and you also notice the input decoration is what we do to pass in label or error text and whatnot. Got our keyboard type here. Uh, and our password is the exact same way, except it uses this block. Dot password stream. One other thing I noticed while I was doing this is I always thought these were comments, uh, but it's pretty nifty that uh, VS Code just adds these for us. So this is actually not a comment. I can't delete them. I can't even select them. Um, you'll notice like my cursor just goes here around it. This just shows you the end of the input decoration into the text field. So that's pretty nice. It's kind of the end tag that you'd get in JSX. Um, and this submit button is the same same way. Uh, so here it checks whether it has any data uh, and then we call submit on it and it basically only gets triggered when it's valid. Uh, so that's pretty nifty. Um, and then my email value stream, all I wanted to do was I guess show what the current value, the current value is. So if we take a look at this, here is me typing and when I add that at sign, it is valid. So one thing that uh, if you look at my thing, the email value, I said snapshot.data is not equal to null, show the data, otherwise say it's invalid. So what I started with is the email stream to see what that looked like. So if we paste that in, you'll notice this is currently invalid. So we just, the snapshot is currently getting invalid or null data, but as soon as you add an at sign, um, it's valid and so it sends some data through the observable. I don't know if that makes sense. This took me a little while to grasp. Um, but basically the observable is not, it's passing null until you get a valid value 
or at least it's only throwing an error, uh, not data itself with how it's currently set up. Anyway, I highly recommend playing around with this. It took me a little while to understand how it all works, and I'm very new to observables too. Um, but this is the gist of basically RX, RX Dart and how you can create a form with validation in it. I'm going to be playing around with this more, but that is it for this video.